Hello, my name is Ilmengo and in today's video I want to show you basically every clock circuit that I am aware of that is yeah, practical for survival. So uh, this video should be a great reference if you look for a very specific uh, clock circuit and generally I guess uh, you might learn a few new things here. So um, I start with the fast clock, so that's the one game tick clock or 20 hertz clock and then uh, the ones on the right will be slower, so the next one would be the 10 hertz clock, then the 3 game tick clock, and so on. So first, let's start with the 20 hertz clock. So here we activate, for example, a node block um, every game tick. So yeah, this is mostly a great noise maker, and it would activate things um, that make sounds like trapdoors, doors, fence gates, node blocks, and also command blocks. So yeah, not too useful for um, normal survival. Um, yeah, those three clocks all do the same. I uh, yeah, started with that one and compacted it further. And this is the most compact 20 hertz clock you can make. And yeah, so there's also uh, another use. Let's turn down the sound a little bit. Um, it's quite noisy. Okay, uh, Myron Irio showed this. Um, so this door is activated every game tick and I can go through this. Uh, but mobs can't. So if we would spawn a zombie and a villager here, mobs try to pathfind but they can't go through the door. As you can see here. And yeah, I could also go into game mode uh, zero. And I could even hit the mobs, they can't yeah, go through the door. So that's really the only use that I'm aware of for those 20 hertz clocks, except making noise. And um, yeah, Myron Irio also showed a different version where the mobs could go through, but the player can't. Um, so uh, there's a link, link in the video description. And I also recommend to check out Marvin Irio. He's probably the person that knows the most about uh, piston mechanics. Okay, so let's go to the yeah, 10 hertz clock or 2 game tick clock. Um, it's this one. Let's turn the sound back on. So this is also just a noise maker. And yeah. It's interesting, it would also activate stuff like droppers. Um, but yeah, droppers have a cooldown of 4 game ticks, so no matter how often you power them, you could only activate them 5 times per second. And yeah, this circuit is not very useful. So let's continue with the uh, 3 game tick clock. So that's really all there is to it. And yeah, this one is a sticky piston, and that's a normal piston, and the type of piston that updates the ones below, doesn't matter. And yeah, you can see it. Can't, uh, yeah, can't see the redstone block, but um, you would activate, for example, a piston every three game ticks. So yeah, that's the fastest a piston could pulse. Okay. So uh, that's a different kind of free game tick clock, but this one is not that useful um, because it's um, yeah, it doesn't work with the pistons that well. Um, so it also I yeah, would activate a command block every three game ticks or uh, yeah, fence gate or something like that, but it only activates the piston every six game ticks. Um, yeah, I can slow the game down a little bit so you can see here. It activates here, but doesn't there. Uh, that test through with the update order. And yeah, the circuit here is also what I used for the 20 hertz clock. So we just have three of those and they are activated um, with two game ticks in between. That's how we get the 20 hertz clock. Okay, so let's continue with the four game tick clock. You probably might know this one. Uh, it's the normal comparator clock. Um, yeah, what's noteworthy here is that you can't, for example, attach a repeater here. Um, the reason is that um, yeah, first you have signal strength 15 here, then 14, 13, so the signal strength is decreased 
by 13. So then this one is 2, 1, 0. So this is this alternates between 14 and 1, and this one alternates between 15 and 2, and that's why we couldn't attach a repeater here. So I always have to go out a little bit. So this one alternates between 13 and 0, so that's why I could add a repeater here. Okay, um, so that's a different method to make a 5 hertz clock. Just have two repeaters facing into each other, but the problem with this one is, is that uh, it's a little bit um, hard to automate it, um, so this one is better um, to automate it. Okay, yeah, I have to, s to stop it, I have to either pull out a block or something similar. And the, fa uh, the last 5 hertz clock is the torch burner clock. So we have yeah, three tor torches attached to it, and they would take turns with uh, yeah, burning out, and they also activate each other. So when a torch is burned out, it would go um, go on again if it gets a block update, and the, the other torch does does that, and then can take the output where you want. This one is a little bit noisy, and technically you only need two of those torches. But if you if turn it on, you mostly need the third torch. So sometimes it works with two, but sometimes it doesn't. Okay, yeah, if, if you try it out. Um, uh, from my experience, you need three at least. Okay, so the next clock, of course, is the five game tick clock, or four hertz clock. Um, so this is quite similar to the three, three game tick clock. Um, so the part on the left is the same, so we have a stick piston and then this redstone block um, yeah, activates this normal piston of a repeater in between, so that's a 5 game tick clock. So next one is the 6 game tick clock, um, so this is probably the easiest one, or the simplest one, similar to the uh, 3 game tick clock. And maybe we'll explain how this works. So if the piston retracts, let's load the game down a little bit, then it gets powered, but uh, it doesn't know that it is unpowered yet. Um, it only knows that after three game ticks, when the block is fully extended, and basically the piston updates itself, and then it retracts again, and yeah, the whole process takes six game ticks. Okay, you could also do this with a slime block, for example. So it yeah, powers itself here, and then you have the 6 game tick clock. Um, yeah, so this is an interesting one, um, we have two droppers that face into each other, and as I said, droppers have 4 game tick of delay, and the comparator has 2. So every 6 game ticks one of those comparators would be activated when the item goes from one side to the, uh, from the other. and seems to be on all the time, but I uh, get yeah, zero tick off pulses and for example only node blocks act, uh, are activated by those, or droppers for example, or yeah, trap doors. So if you touch a piston, nothing would happen. Um, this was useful as you can one eight to make ghost blocks. Uh, you, you saw the piston arm flickering there. Okay. So the next one is the 7 game tick clock, it's a little bit different to the 5 and 3. Um, so here you can see it from the top. This piston is just there to activate this one because it's stuck, so um, this is still... Oh no, that's a normal piston, uh, so we have two normal pistons now. And yeah, you can see it in action. That's the 7 game tick clock. Then to make an 8 game tick clock, yeah, I would recommend to do the comparator clock and the repeater in between. So this yeah, pulses every 8 game ticks or 2.5 hertz. And yeah, you could easily um, alternate this one. So now you would have a 12 game tick clock, 16 game tick clock, or 20 game tick clock, or 1 second clock. So this is yeah, the standard model probably know this one and might not know this one I showed this a while ago on my channel that's also a 8 game tick clock and it's quite interesting because of the yeah, kind of pulse it creates 
Um, so this comparator is on for um, uh, for six game ticks and off for two game ticks, and this is quite interesting. For example, to power um, power drails, which might be useful in the sheep farm or something similar. And it could also take an output from this uh, from the hopper. So now this is on for uh, for two game ticks and off for six game ticks. That's quite interesting. Okay, so of course the next one is the nine game tick lock. And I actually just needed it the other day. So yeah, might need those <laughs> at some point. Um, so here you can see it from the top. It's quite easy to build. So there's a normal piston and those are sticky pistons. And this repeater is on two. So let's turn it on. And this is the nine game tick lock. And you could rebuild this to make a eleven game tick lock. So we have to move that one one over. So it's some dust here. And then we need a block here. And another redstone dust here. And now you can add another repeater. And this way you have an 11 game tick lock. Or you could add more delay. So 13, 15, and so on. So if you need, uh, yeah an odd number uh, of game ticks for a clock. So the next one is the 10 game tick clock. Um, so this one is yeah quite simple if you uh, turn it on manually. So we just have um, 10 game ticks of delay and loop it around with those yeah, repeaters. But again uh, similar to the 5 hertz clock uh, might be yeah uh, take some effort to turn it off, and of course you could also um, yeah, extend this so twelve game ticks and so on. And yeah, so it might be an option if you need, for example, a ten ga ten game tick clock or a five redstone tick clock, or f fourteen uh, respectively seven redstone ticks. And yeah, you could also kind of do that um, with the comparator clock. Um, so. Um, every 10 game ticks this would turn on and this would turn off and then the other way around every 10 game ticks. So similar to the uh, 6 game tick clock I showed previously so this would only activate for example a dropper but if you need to activate droppers every 10 game ticks it's an option. Um, yeah, if you add for example a monostable to both lines then you would have a pulse every and game ticks, for example. I could easily expand it, so now would be 14 and so on. Let's yeah, go back to 10. So the next one is quite interesting. Uh, it's a different uh, 11 game tick clock. So it's the basic zero tick pulse generator that pulses every 10 game ticks. So yeah, it's kind of important that you have a mix of sand and gravel since 1.9. In 1.8 you could also have two sand, but that changed. So this is yeah one of the most useful circuits in the whole game because it does a lot of stuff. So create a cyrotic pulse, but also the falling sand would create one of those interesting pulses that I showed in my last video. Um, we could yeah power a torch tower for example. So for two uh, game tick pulse and that would for example. Um, Make a piston. Oh, yeah. Make a piston drop its block. And uh, this is only possible um, with the falling sand, for example. Or you could also use different methods. Okay. So, and if you have a mixture of sand, then you would create a 16 game tick clock. Um, but it's yeah, it's, has the flaw um, that the first interval is 11 game ticks and then it's uh, always 16. So you can see here, now the sand um, flies up higher. What's interesting is that, uh, the sand also changes position. So now the red sand is below, then the white one, and so on. And yeah, this pulses every 16 game ticks. But the first interval is just 11 game ticks. So yeah. Take care of that. And so the next one is a 
12 game tick clock. Um, so we have this yeah loop with the torch in between, and that's really the fastest clock you could make with a torch. Otherwise, it would burn out. So you can't make an eight game tick clock because it would burn out. And you can also do that with um, yeah, three torches, for example. And of course you could add delay, so now it's um, 16, 20 and so on, similar to the comparator clock. And yeah, this is one that's also quite interesting, um, it's two hoppers that face into each other and that's a 15 game tick clock, so odd number. And why 15? Uh, it's because of the update order of those um, hoppers, so in the update order one hopper is always uh, in front of the other. So if the hopper is in front then it takes seven game ticks to transfer an item and if it's the back or behind then it takes eight game ticks. So no matter what you do one of those hoppers is uh, behind the other one in the update order and then it would take seven and eight game ticks. So yeah, get a pulse every 15 game ticks. And yeah, similar um, with uh, this dropper circuit, so that's also a 15 game tick clock. Um, so that's also quite useful if you need an odd game tick clock. Um, we could also make a 17 game tick clock out of it and a 19 one. But if we would try to make a 21 game tick clock out of it, then it stops. So you need to, um, for example, add a monostable. Like this, for example. Then let's take this out and back in. Oh, in item here. Okay, so now it would work again. Okay, so as I said, um, uh, the hoppers transfer items either with seven or eight game ticks in between. So on average, it would be 7.5 game ticks per hopper. And of course, this is locational. So here we have yeah, 12 hoppers, and there's a single item, both of them. So if I turn this on, it would start flowing. And uh, let's see what happens. So at first, it seems like they would activate at the same time, but uh, after a few cycles, then you can see that. Yeah, so now this one activates before this one. Oh, the other way around, sorry. So as you can see, yeah, difference becomes even bigger. And so I think there's just a game tick difference in between and that's just because um, hoppers are locational. And now you can see the difference is quite big. Yeah. So yeah, be aware of this if you use hoppers uh, for timing that it, uh, yeah, it's locational. And if you need precise timings, don't use hoppers or take care of that. Okay, so what's next? Then we have the fader clocks. So here we have a basic 14, uh, 40 game tick model. Um, yeah, it's similar to the comparator clock, so if you turn this on. Then we have the fade out from the comparators and then this one here would activate every 40 game ticks. And you could easily add delay, so every tick with the repeaters would add 4 game ticks with delay, so 44, 48, 52 and so on. And you could also make a simpler version um, like this. Uh, but this has the uh, disadvantage that it would um, yeah, it would take a while before it turns on the first time. So as you can see here, it takes a while before it turns on. So that's why I mostly use this one uh, despite being a little bit bigger. And this one um, has an uh, uh, interval of 58 game ticks and every pair of comparators you would add here adds 30 game ticks of delay. So now it would be 88. Okay, let's revert that. Yeah, and this is quite similar, so this would turn on immediately. And this one has 72 game ticks of delay. And every additional comparator adds 60 game ticks. So this at 30 earlier. 
uh, okay, I have to correct myself. So if you add a pair of comparators, it would be 118 game ticks. And here's the same. So if you add two more comparators, then it's 132 game ticks. Okay. So here's, for example, a 400 game tick clock. So I added some delay with the repeaters here and then eight pairs of comparators and this would activate every 20 seconds. So this is yeah, basically if you need something in between a uh, fast pulsing clock and a yeah, long time, for example, hopper clock, then those are the way to go. Um, because yeah, the hopper clocks have always have the disadvantage that hopper duping might occur, um, which that's why I don't really like to use hopper clocks that often. And if it's something like 20 seconds, I mostly use one of those circuits. Okay, yeah, so next up, hopper clocks. Um, so they have 15 game ticks um, for the first item, and then every additional item adds 16 game ticks of delay. Uh, so that's the that basic um, hopper clock. The, I think TT and Minecraft showed that the first time. Um, so we have two items in there. Um, so this torch would turn on every 31 game ticks. And if we would add another item, it would be every 41, uh, 47 game ticks. Okay, yeah, you might know ESO's hopper clock. Um, oh, we had some item tubing already. Ah, yeah, that's why I don't like to use hopper clocks. Uh, so the similar 15 game ticks for the first item, every additional item adds um, 16 game ticks. And for example, if you would yeah, take out two outputs and merge them like this, so then um, would activate um, after 15 game ticks and then after 16 and yeah, twice in 31 game ticks. Okay, you could also chain those um, hopper clocks together if you need really long uh, delay and yeah, if you to chain one of two uh, of T -T Minecraft's clocks and you could replace those um, hoppers here with um, droppers and you would fill up them completely then yeah, we get three, almost three and a half days of delay. Okay, uh, yeah, and since there's hopper tubing in a game, which is quite annoying, for example, if you need a clock that would always run, I mostly use the item duping free dropper clock. Um, <laughs> so there's one item in those droppers, and here's yeah, the amount of um, items you need for yeah for your delay and you need an external clock to um, to power it so for example if you use the fader clock that I said activates every 58 game ticks this would be a clock that would always run so that no, nothing can go wrong with this one um, so you can leave the chunks and everything um, uh, I think this is really fail proof if you need, if you need a fail-proof uh, clock that yeah isn't affected by uh, item duping of hoppers, as long as mulching doesn't fix it. But um, yeah, we've, <laughs> we've been waiting for the item duping fix since three years, so yeah. Okay, that's basically it. I showed pretty much all I know about um, clocks. Of course, there's some old school clocks um, that aren't that useful anymore. And show those. You can also check the Minecraft wiki and yeah. Hope this was useful for you. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and goodbye.